Hey, 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 my LinkedIn family, friends who are tuning in from the clubhouse. If you guys prefer audio only, stay there for the listening session. But if you would like to interact with me and my extra special guest today, click into my LinkedIn or clubhouse bio, go to the LinkedIn profile right now and interact with me and my extra special guest today. And bring your questions. We're so open to answer everyone's question. And happy home day, everyone. And welcome to another on my LinkedIn Live. And you guys know the drill. If you guys hear me crystal clear, please, please leave a comment below and show us some love, show us some thumbs up, because today is going to be an incredible discussion with my awesome LinkedIn BFF here. And again, guys, you know I'm dialing in from the Stream Yard tool, which is a third party stream tool. And it might be a little bit of lagging in between. So it would be amazing if you guys can comment. So I know you can hear us crystal clear. It's the easiest way for me to know whether you can enjoy this live session with me and my special extra guest. Um, at, with me today and making sure there's no technical issues for the next 60 minutes. So today, I'm super stoked to welcome my special guest and my awesome LinkedIn BFF friend here. He is the CEO of CarShore, Wickening Consulting, faith-based coach, mentor and speaker, aspiring civil rights attorney, and his mission is to inspire people's mission, a passion, empower them to fulfill the destiny and help leaders to achieve greatness. So guys, give me a warm welcoming to Car Shore today. Yay! Let me stream him. Hey, Car. Hey, what's going on? I'm doing great. How you doing, Selena? Good, very well. Thank you so much for joining us today and talk about how to create stroll stopping content on LinkedIn. Yes. I know for a fact that you are a wordsmith and I am inspiring so, so much about your writing and you always inspire me with so much great content ideas. And I'm just so happy to have you today here. I'm great to be here. Uh, me and you have talked a lot. Uh, on different uh, platforms and, and, and Zoom and those kind of things. And I just have this love for your zeal and uh, what you bring to the table. And I'm just excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you. And we're so excited to hear uh, from you, too. And I mean, to begin with, I always do that with my guests. And I want to say similar do to you because obviously your audience and my audience would love to know more about CAR. So, I want to kickstart by asking, what's three fun facts about you that is not on your LinkedIn profile? Uh, yeah, I, I, I try not to put everything on there, but I got some goodies for you today. Uh, the first one I want uh, everybody to probably be surprised about, but I don't know if a lot of people saw the movie Ali with uh, Will Smith. Well, I yeah. Was Oh, I was an extra on that movie. I didn't have no any lines way. or anything, but I was in one of the crowd shots uh, at the fights. So that's something that I don't put on the profile uh, oh that nobody gosh. knows. That's so uh, exciting. Yeah, it is. It is. I got paid 75 bucks. So it was a big thing. <laughs> Whoa, let's go. Do you have pictures of you being on the crowd? <laughs> I, I, I don't have any because back then, like Ali is kind of old. So back then, like the phone wasn't really, you know, everybody now the phones around like that. But um, yes, I was on there. And uh, like I said, we just it was just a crowd shot. Uh, I don't even know. I try to go back into the movie now. I see the place where it took place, but I, you know, when you try to find yourself, I'm like, where was I at? <laughs> so, so kind of but it was That's a cool experience. So they, you know, yeah, they, they came into Philly and they were just looking for extras and they just was grabbing people. I happened to be on the lunch break and they oh just grabbed God. people. Yo, we give you 75 bucks to sit right here so we can do this shot. So oh I was like, God. oh, okay. So I, I never saw Will and stuff until they brought him out, you know, but I never yeah. saw him. Before. But he's a big, he's a big deal in Philly. So yeah, it was yeah. pretty special. Yeah. It All is. Right, so that's one. Special. Yeah, it was special. It was special. Something I won't forget. Yeah, definitely. That's great. Thanks so much for sharing. I couldn't believe you are one of the set guests, you know, from one of the 
big uh, big movie so this is great how about other fun facts about you well another fun fact is it, go, it goes along with the uh, movie so i am a huge bruce lee fan i don't like you know i know that uh i've been watching that and uh he was one of the reasons why i started taking taekwondo as a kid so my mom put oh. me in that so we would be have some discipline so yeah. it was just so great and i used to just watch all his movies i still do today I still pop them in the DVD and I watch these <laughs> guys. It's just, it's just like great. He was just such a, a like a showman, and then his martial arts was just so on to him. He was like he was like my child, one of my childhood heroes. That yeah, really was amazing. Really so that's was, a lot of things people don't know about. Yeah, him. definitely. I was just uh, thinking whether you're on his set too with Bruce Lee. I would be like, no, Whoa. no, I, <laughs> man. If that have been on Bruce Lee's set, they probably would have had to arrest me because I'd have been running up to him trying to get an autograph or something. But oh, nah. I will too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's uh, he was my he was my uh, he was my uh, kind of childhood hero. I always wanted to be like Bruce Lee. I had the little suit and was always going around chopping. So oh, it was, love it was, that. It was a yeah, it was a love that. Day. Yeah, me too. <laughs> oh, someone say my man, Car. It's <laughs> so good to have you. Yes. <laughs> so what's your third fun fact, Car? And my third, my third fun fact is a little bit with nationalities. A lot of people don't know this about me just looking African American, that I'm actually mixed with four ethnicities. So I am mixed with Indian, German, Irish, and of course, African American. So I have a German uh, grandfather. I have a Indian grandmother and my grandmother or on my mother's side is Irish, German, and Indian oh as well. God. So, wow. yeah. So That's the African American. Yeah, how do you mixed. know? Obviously, well, your when, grandparents told you. Well, it was kind of like obvious growing up. My grandparents, like, they didn't look like us. So, you know, it was like, you know, because my grandfather, he was like, he's German from, he's, he's German and, and black from the war. He's a kid of the war. And then uh, my grandmother being Indian, uh, I don't even know how they kind of like met, but they met and then have the kids and, and, and so forth. So it was always a conversation where we had a lot of different colors in our family, especially holiday time, like we, you know, we had white people, black people, Incredible. yellow people, you know. So it was kind of like one of those things that you grew up with. So you kind of like inquisitive and ask questions. Yo, what side did you come from? What side did you come from? How you, you know? Yeah. So that's how. Yeah. So that's kind of that's how I found out way before genealogy. You know. Yeah. I just, yeah. I just yeah. Asked. Yes. Yeah, but I mean, nowadays technology is amazing. I know for a fact that they can tell you where your grand grand grandparents, like maybe yeah. five or even ten generation, where they're originally from, right? And I actually yeah. really want to do one because oftentimes uh, my family is pretty tall for Asian, and my my uncle is one one. 89 almost 190 which is super super tall for asian so okay. i was just wondering whether there there is some genetics that it's actually mixed i don't know with 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 others other than uh, continental asia for instance so i'm really intrigued to know so it's great to know that you you're very clear about your mix and obviously my friend here darling in gregory was saying that's quite a mix molly smelly Greg, so happy to have you joining i think this one it must be cars friends um linkedin user <laughs> thank you so much for joining and this is my friend Shavam here. Thank you so much for joining. Guys, you guys know the drill. If you guys are dialing in from a specific country, say hi to me and Car because we'll be talking about everything, how to stroll, uh, create stroll stopping uh, content here on LinkedIn. So, so great to hear Car's three fun facts. And Car, I want to ask you, like, how did you start your Car Shore Wickening Consulting? Uh, Carlson Watkins, it, it came out of uh, Carlson's Daily Word and it's sort of like a lifestyle that I've that I've had. I've always mentored, uh, I've always uh, coached in leadership and had those kind of positions and uh, and I overcame a lot of things even just growing up with uh, being an abuse survivor, surviving addiction, uh, overcoming depression. So it was a lot of tools that I already had in the toolbox. I always tell people I got a PhD in experience 
because I experienced a lot of things and it kind of taught me the resilience in a lot of things. And writing was really the foundation for my therapy through everything that I went through. Uh, a lot of people don't know that uh, at Christmas when I was five, I get a dictionary from my dad because I used to love to read books and and uh, kind of do those things when I was little. And uh, when he gave me the dictionary, we kind of like had a uh, uh, kind of like a bond in it. He would tell me that, you know, we're going to go through the dictionary. We're going to read it. We're going to learn how to spell the words. We're going to learn how to use them in a sentence and and learn what they mean. And I just thought it was spending time with dad because I was like a dad's boy. So I thought it was spending time with him. And I really didn't look at the value of what he was really instilling in me. And he was helping me to, to broaden my vocabulary, get an understanding of words and being able to use words when I talk to people. So I was clear about that. And when he died, when I was 15, it, it really hit me what he had done because mm -hmm. my vocabulary was so, and even teachers was telling me like, I've never met a kid just, just like use the words you use and talk like you talk. Right. Wow. So uh, I thought it was a special thing. And from there, I just started with the writing and I just started keeping like, it started with a journal. Then I was able to write poetry. Then like thoughts would just come and I would just write. And I think the biggest thing that he gave me is that I understand words far more than just what Webster say they are. Yeah. So that's what really pushed uh, Carl Sean's uh, daily word. And then that is evolving into uh, Carl Sean Watkins Consulting. It's the same faith base that uh, the spiritualness of what I write and how I feel and how I understand words to me that affects people. I want that to be something that inspires people, move people past some of the obstacles that they're dealing with and some of those things. And I just love working with people. I love sharing, you know, what I have. Yeah. And I, I think your audience absolutely love the part that you're being so authentic of who you are. You just are so willing to open up and share your story. And that's that's why I, I just enjoy so, so much to connect with you on LinkedIn as well. Cart, thank you so much for sharing such an inspiring story. I mean, to me, having a dad or a parent that really um, understand the talent at such a young age is just so yeah. rare, right? Um, to give you a dictionary, it's it's not a gift that every kid will be happy about, like you said, right? It could be a toy, especially for a little boy, right? Like you prefer maybe, I don't know, like like a robot or or something fun to play with but he he decided to give you a dictionary he must see that you you have a huge potential to really being uh, a wordsmith or just express words like nobody else which is exactly what you do right so this is absolutely yeah. inspiring yeah yeah that's what it was that's, that's kind of like what he saw i didn't too much uh, care for it when I got it. And he kind of saw that. So he kind of uh, pulled me up on the couch and he kind of made it like a game for us. And he said, that, uh, he said, well, we'll do, we'll do it day by day and I'll show you how to use it and I'll show you how to talk and I'll, I'll show you how to explain it and talk through it. So I took away that of not really getting something I thought I wanted into like, wow, this is like time for us to spend together and it's time for us to bond. And, and, and it was actually a good thing because not too long, you know, after that he passed and that's really what I have memories of those times and those nights. And some days I was so excited, you know, the dictionary has short words. Some yeah. days I, I took three or four words and I would do more words to, mm -hmm. to try to show him I was really getting this. So it was, yeah. it's, it's a pleasure. But, you know, he, he just graduated from high school, but he wasn't the smartest, like book smarter. But he just had this intelligence about him that, you know, he's an old Southern guy. He was born in the South. And he just had this mind about things that, you know, nowadays I'm looking at stuff and I'm seeing all the things he told me. And I'm like, wow, he was so spot on. But he wasn't this educated, you know, kind of yeah. guy that we look at for people who have knowledge. He just had he just had the intuition, I guess, just God given yeah. knowledge. Yeah, that's incredible. Wow. This is absolutely inspiring. And and I like that. Um, I think a few weeks back you are asking, you know, your audience what are one word that inspire you, right? And mm -hmm. I think for mine is knowledge. I want to know yours as well as your dad's uh, word as well, which is one word that inspires you. My one word that inspires me actually is inspiration. 
And that, that that comes from so much. I know it's something like inspiring thought or something that moves you or 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 transcends you or transforms your thinking or something like that. But inspiration to me is what I see. So I don't have it bottled up into one thing. I'm like, I don't have it like, you know, I can say that you're inspiring to me, but I can also say the weather is inspiring to me, you know, how things change are inspiring to me. So those things was what doesn't put a limit on how I write because I can see anything and get inspired by it. It, it doesn't matter. I, I oftentimes look, and it's funny, before my washing machine, uh, I mean, not my washing machine, my laundry, my dryer and washing machine was yeah. broken. I had the window and then when I would do my laundry, I would gaze into the window while the clothes were washing and I would just get thoughts. Yeah. I'm just like looking at that. And I was like, oh man, it's amazing how the clothes just agitate, you know, just stuff like that kind of quirky yeah. stuff. Yeah, I love that. I, I have moments like that too, but washing my machine might not be mine, but mine is actually in the shower. I don't know. It's wow. just. One of the plays that I always come up with content ideas is when I'm showering. Maybe I'm just, oh. I shower twice a day. <laughs> so maybe perhaps that's why. I like to shower in the morning as well as at night before I go to bed. And usually showering is the time where like new ideas come to my mind or like a, a, a problem or a, a, like an issue, particularly about a business, how to tackle. I usually get my inspiration from it. So it's it's great to hear yours is actually the washing machine. <laughs> I like that too. It's re re revolving, you know, so that's good. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I just want to quickly uh, uh, share with uh, friends that from Clubhouse that is listening, tuning in. I know Jab, Joe, um, Nadell, as well as Fasel earlier. I see you guys up there. If you guys are interested to see me and Cara in action, just come over to LinkedIn and ask us any questions and interact with us. But if you prefer to have an audio dial in like Joe and Jeff, feel free to stay in and enjoy the listening session. And I just want to welcome Fasal, which is my absolute favorite uh, light coach here. He say, hey, Car, I love that PS. I'm dialing in from Switzerland, right in oh, the wow. border of Germany. Woohoo. Right. And then Gregory was like, sounds like life uh, taught you many lessons. Thanks so much for sharing. Great. And Nadell, so happy that you can join us. Hello, hello back. And Shaban here, I can see anything, so inspire and love this point car. Love this. And uh, Nita here, most of mine while, <laughs> while I'm driving. I love that. Cool. Driving, yes. Driving also give me a lot of yeah. inspiration. I, I guess it's just because you something that is repetitive actually <laughs> free your minds up with, you know, inspiration or new ideas to be alive. So I, I, I do believe, um, you know, driving or uh, while you're waiting for uh, your laundry to be picked up or me showering, that's that's the one. Great car. Uh, cool. Hey, oh, Danan also join us. Hey, 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 happy to be here. Selena Yao, hey, welcome, welcome. So, Car, like I said, you are the wordsmith here, and I am just blown away your amazing writing skills. And writing comes so naturally to you. And, yeah. how, like, from your dad's story, how your dad inspired you by giving you a dictionary for your gift. How do you get inspiration from what you write? Like, apart from washing machine, but on LinkedIn, how mm -hmm. those ideas come across for you? How do you generate content ideas? I kind of generate content. Um, I, I kind of go within. A lot of it is a lot of it is meditating. A lot of it is just like thought processes. I get a, a quiet space. I think me and Jeff, had, uh, Jeff Clark, we had talked about this once before. How I get up early and it, and it's it's like a it's like a concerted effort to kind of like you know to kind of like connect. And yeah. the spirits and the, and the spiritual. So I get up and I say my prayers, and I kind of have that quiet time before the house is moving or before everybody's up, or kind of like when the birds are chirping. I get a lot of like listening, listening to things. And once listening, and you get that quiet moment, thoughts start coming. And I keep my phone by me because I'm always putting in the notes things. Like I don't have like I don't think thoughts like straight through. But I think something I think like uh, dedication, 
Uh, yeah. Like a word, a word to come like that, and then I was oh, dedication, and then I start working the ideas with that, and then I get a lot from. Uh, you can get a lot off of social media, but you have to know how to chew it, eat up the meat, and spit out the bones. Because of course, it's a lot of bad things, and it's a lot of things that contaminate yourself. But with the community that we have on LinkedIn, I go on sometime and I do what I call a a uh, notification scroll. Mm. And I just scroll through people's notification and I kind of get a feel for how the people in my network are feeling because they will let you know on their posts. Like I can go if someone has a bad day or someone's having an awesome day or yeah. somebody dealing with uh, migraines or something like that. And then it reverts back to that word. I don't know how it does it. I can't explain it. But like yeah. the word that I started the day with, more than likely that'll be somewhere where I can touch bases in the notifications. And then I just sit down from that point and I just write. Uh, I can actually put some posts out and this is not bragging. This is just how I write. I can mm -hmm. actually put something out every hour to post. Wow. That's yeah. how stuff come. Mm -hmm. But I write and I got like notebooks and I, and I keep. Inspiration. Yeah, mm -hmm. I keep pads. So I'm always writing and it just comes out like that. And then sometimes I write stuff and I go back and read it because when you're in the thought process of writing, not all the time I fix the sentences, not all the time I put the explanation yeah. points where, because it's it just coming, I want to get it down. But then when I put it up and I'll go back and scroll, I'll be like, wow, that was kind of powerful. Like it, it takes me sometimes. <laughs> I was yeah. like, wow, that was kind of like, like I, I, I don't like, to, yeah, I don't like to use the word deep. Right. <laughs> yeah. I was like, where did that come from? And then I go back and, and I read stuff and I read stuff later and I was like, wow. So it, it's just easy to do. And I'm learning now how to repurpose. I didn't always do it. I always thought it was just, you know, well, it comes so easy. So I'm always putting out new, but I'm also want to take effect of some of the good stuff I've written and repurpose that. And that's what I'm going to be doing on the business side. I'm going to be taking that and mentoring and coaching with that good stuff that I put out and it could be repurposed for that. Cause a lot of times we write stuff and it goes past us and we don't really see the effect. Cause yeah. I went back to a couple of posts that I did when I first put them out, I had like a couple hundred views. Now I've checked them like months later and then like the views are in the thousands. So people have come back and they've seen it and it resonated. So that's something I need to go back and get and help and funnel to other people. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Yeah. I love that car. Like, so if you allow me summarizing all the amazing point that you just said, I, I guess mm -hmm. I also resonate to the very first point, which is before you post content or think about content, you need to consume enough content, right? Like you said, mm -hmm. you need to read enough in order to inspire you what to write. And right. like you said, there's a challenging of, you know, really digesting it and really bit off from the bones and really get all the meats out. And that's part of the challenge. But at the same time, you use the notification strategies to really mm -hmm. help you consolidate plus you go back to your past content to look up take a look which one works for you and you go ahead and ju just basically really deep dive and doubling down your energy or effort to make another post which is the repurpose um strategies that you talk about which which i think repurpose on linkedin is incredibly important and it's in a way that i think has challenged a lot of people and often when i speak to my clients or my audience they would always be like oh yeah the first post is really tough selena but once you sort of guide me through it's the same theme let's talk about like personal branding but i talk about that over and over again, that it's just so easy. And it could be in different forms as well. It could be a pose, it could be a picture with text, or it could be a story form. It could be a blog, which I know, Car, you write really amazing blog here. Um, all those are repurposing, right? The same yeah. idea, but going to long form or short form or even a poll, like a question that will work very well. So I, I totally echo on the repurposing point. It's great and make sure you consume enough content. And another point that I would like to add on is, I, I don't know whether Carl, you agree with me because you're also in the industry. 
Um, I also will refer to what are some of the frequent asked questions from my clients and followers or friends. And I, I find most of the content ideas will really help them. And I will put those as my educational pieces so that I am basically a like AMA, ask me anything, sort of like replying them through my post. And I find it quite often very useful. Yes, that is something that uh, that I'm getting. And it, it's amazing that when you have this talent, and a lot of people don't understand it, 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 it is a talent because I can't explain it. I just just know that I can do it. So that's yeah. how you know it's a talent. Mm-hmm. I didn't go to school for, I mean, I did have training with the with the dictionary and the vocabulary. So I had the training, how to enunciate, how to, you know, properly use them in their place uh, to get, but to get that understanding of words, the way that I understand them. Because I understand words past what the dictionary say they are. Yeah. And that's where the inspiration comes from. It's not like I'm telling somebody a word that they can't go look up. Yeah. Or they can't find for themselves. But when I give them that definition at the top of my daily word, that's putting them on the same page. But what I do after that, it goes into who I am and how mm-hmm. I see that word. And most of the times when that happens, that's when the connection comes. Because when I write that part, that's what gets people. Yeah. And like us, and that's why I was asking people to uh, give me their their one word. Because I wanted people to see how, for one, see how simple it was for me to do. But for two, see how hard it was for me to do. And on that point, it was simple for me to write it. But I'm going to show you how hard it is because what I give you is going to resonate with you. And that's what I think that it was. So I took. it's taken a while to get to the point of where I understanding the, the, the specs and the dynamics of what my writing can do. Before it was just a process of like, yo, I want people to see this. But now I want people to take purpose with it and I want direction with it. And this is this is what I've been given like here lately the past couple of weeks. So I got a couple of things that, you know, I'm doing impact that those strategies that we're going to be writing down, that we're going to be sharing with others that repurpose, that going back and diving in some things you wrote, stop looking for new stuff because nothing's yeah. really new. You've said something before that has resonated with people, but you really haven't taken the time to go back. And check that, you know, check your archives, check things that you've written, uh, go through scrolls, go through notifications. People are really telling you every day what they want, but you gotta be, you gotta be intuition enough to notice, Hey, Hey, this is, this is a theme of today. And I, and I write it down when I write, it's like, let me go to uh, notifications and get a theme. And I go through and like the percentage, most of the posts, I say, okay, well, the theme today is people need to know about being vulnerable. Cause I'm hearing people struggle with that in their posts. I mean, people saying that this day is not all that great for me. So I get that and I say, okay, today is going to be a vulnerability day. So I'm going to go through all my vulnerability and I'm going to look and, and, and that's what I'm going to put out there. Love that. Wow. I, I like how your thinking processes is like <laughs> start with just a very simple one word and go mm-hmm. wild with your ideas and voila, you have 10 posts, you know? And then plus obviously to go to your notification and understanding what your past posts have been doing really well and mm-hmm. then go and take it back and just basically uh, amplify that. And I, I really like that idea. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure their audience would, would love that. Just want to quickly uh, say hi to all these friends here. Then Ellie also say, Driving with radio off is uh, when I get my best idea. I love that. And Nadell here, when getting orders from my wife, too. <laughs> I like that. And he added, I think when it comes to inspiring content, there's no scale or indicator. Any content could be inspiring when it touches someone's frustration, minds, or soul. I love that. So Great. key. So true. Yeah, very, very true. Um, last but not least, but the key is to know this content and write it down and then review it before posting and releasing to the public. Absolutely. That's why Carr mentioned earlier, you have your notepad or all the time you have your phone, yes. whenever you have that idea, you will just, you know, write, write it down very quickly. So all these are amazing valid points. Thank you. Nadal and thank you, Danelli, for joining. And if, if you guys want to chip in more ideas, feel free to interact with us because we'll love to hear from you. Great, Carl. Next is we're going to 
talk about like some really nitty gritty of how to create stroll stopping posts on LinkedIn. So I want to start by sharing a little bit of LinkedIn algorithm, if you allow, Car. Yes, it's absolutely. Called, yeah, it's called a dwell time. So maybe you guys have heard about it. So dwell time is what the LinkedIn AI uh, team is creating in order to feed each individual LinkedIn member the best content that is most relevant to you as well as content that you might like. So how did they do that? It's basically you have some favorite content creator, and if you like and engage their posts often, their post is going to show on your news most of the time. So how the drill time, dwell time really works? If it's the longer you basically have the post on your news feed, if you stop strolling, so it's shorter, like, uh, like sort of like shorter stroll time and longer dwell time that helps you to basically get higher reach on that post. So how would you do that by, you know, longer the dwell time and shorten your audience, uh, you know, sort of strolling time, right? Is to basically what I like to call follow the four C. So the first one is compelling. Second is concise. The third one is being credible, which is what Carl said, being yourself, being authentic. And last but not least is not, you know, worry about changes because that's one of the things that we're afraid of. But that's actually helped you to formulate the best post that works the best for your audience. So that's the four C I have. Carl, how do you create stroll stopping posts to maximum the dwell time on LinkedIn and shorter the time of strolling time for your audience? I, I sort of, I don't have a four C's, but what I, I do have is, is just a flow that I use um, in, in the essence of that. The first line of my post has to catch you. And when I say that it's oftentimes, it's oftentimes something that is just uh, answers your question, engages you with excitement, or it grabs you is that, oh, I want to read the rest. So my first line on my first couple sentences have some, you just say if I want to write a post about, uh, about vulnerable, like I did a couple of days ago. Mm. And uh, my first two lines was vulnerability is not about winning or losing. Okay. So now I got you because now you want to, okay, well, what is vulnerability about? Now you're yeah. going to stop and take the time to go through my scroll. So when you have the, the scroll stopping, uh, you you hit it right on the head. I, I just want to command your attention. And once I command your attention, you're going to take the time to read it. I did this also with videos, and I was getting a lot of flack back with this when I first started. But mm -hmm. I also saw how it made my views and how it really pushed the daily word. Because what I would do, I would make videos without, without the... Uh, the content bars. Yeah. I would do my videos and I would, and people, yeah, without the, the, um, the scroll yeah. with the words yeah. so people can read them. Right. And people would tell yeah. me all the time, man, you need to put that at the bottom. Cause like it's people at work and they're not going to read it or, you know, it, it's people don't see no words. They're going to scroll past it. Yeah. And I said, that make no sense to me because if I see something, I can't hear it. It enthuse me to go in here. Oh. So I would make, I would make my videos and I wouldn't put I wouldn't put the words at the bottom. And for the first few videos, it was like less hits and less hits. So I said, no, that's the, the what I'm going to stick with. And I'm going to work that. I'm going to work that to my best. So mm -hmm. I did it and I did it. And eventually my videos was getting thousands of views. Mm -hmm. So when someone tells me that, you know, you got to do that, it's all what works for you. But some of the things that are really that I found to work for me is sticking to the things that I'm true to. Yeah. So if it's something that you're true to, stick that out, stick through it. Don't change it. And you, I think you mentioned that as one of, one of your C's. Don't change it. My first video post, I did 44 takes. Wow. I, did, <laughs> I discarded it from my phone because I was trying to be this. Totally this resonate to that. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I did it. I did it. I, I mean, I actually counted all the takes. And uh, Shanae from Growth Academy had... Uh, I, mean, this, I don't even really think she had made the Growth Academy yet. This was in my infancy stage and early stage that she just was giving out content. And yeah. uh, we were talking about me and getting my writings. And I sent her a lot of writings 
that I wrote. And she was like, oh, your stuff is strong, but nobody is putting no face to it. Like you just got these posts and they're awesome. So he's like, you're going to have to go to videos so somebody could give you your credibility. That's another C. I guess I do got seeds because I'm. <laughs> you do. You actually do. <laughs> so there was, that was the credibility issue. And I was like, no, I'm good with writing because that's, that's what I do. I don't want people to see me. So she said, okay. So uh, she called me that morning. She zoomed me and she's like, okay, so we're going to work out with you doing a video today, right? I was like, oh, sure, sure, sure. I'm going to do one. But of course I didn't. I've been taking and taking and taking videos all day and I did not like what I saw. So she came back and sent me a message. I think it was like about seven or eight that evening. And she's like, I'm still waiting for your video. Like oh that, was a, <laughs> that was the first time. That's why I like, yeah, that was the first time that anybody had just like came to me. and was like, yo, where is it? And I respect that so much that I said, you know what? I'm going to do it one time. Whether it's good, whether it's bad, whether I stumble, whether I don't say the words right or whatever, I'm going to just hit post. I'm not going to even look at it. So well, that's what I did. Exactly. Man, did I, st yeah, I stumbled. <laughs> like I, I stumbled. I, I kind of fumbled with words because I was just so like nervous and I did all of that, but I, I, I posted it. That post, that was my first video post. It got 800 something views. Wow. Incredible. And people from that point, I said, oh, I can do this. Then I just got the courage to do it after that. It only takes that, you know, it takes the bird to be pushed out the nest to learn how to fly. Absolutely. And that's similarly for the same strategies that we've been, you know, encouraging our friends to do yeah. their very first post on LinkedIn as well, whether it's a written long form post or article. For me, my like most fear or scare sort of format is article, you know, so that's something that you actually encourage me today to, you know, just just blast it and then just don't look at it for a five hours and then come back to it. Maybe it works. All right. I'm going to try. I love that car. That's, and I like that's that. Good. Yeah. Cause that's some of the, that's some of the intuition. Cause a lot of people say, well, do you use this? Do you use that? They ask me different things and I don't use a lot of parameters. I use intuition parameters and I know that it's, there's some out there and I do endorse those because it's different for everybody. So you do have to have those specifics that you kind of know the person that you are, but I'm so in tune with words I don't really like, I don't really look for a lot of things like that. Now, don't get me wrong. I do need direction because sometimes I just write stuff and I'll be like, where is this going? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, sometimes my stuff don't have, I mean, it has direction based upon what it means and how it means. But like, it's like, okay, I'm talking about the sun and the shine and then the moon. And then over here, I'm talking about his fires and, and is it, you know, so sometimes I just have a lot of writing like that going on. So you do need that zone in. For the directions, and that's where I found a lot of help with what you've given out, and with those kind of things that kind of rein in some of the creative, because you can be so creative to an extent where you're over creative, and no one is getting effect out of the things you're creating, and that's yeah. to the point that I was. So I had to stop and reevaluate that and say, oh, okay, you put out a lot of stuff. I've been putting out posts for eleven months now, of posts, and I'm like, that is almost a year of content. Wow. Not just just at that between that post writing articles videos it's like over a year content so now I just need to go take that look at that recycle pieces of that and then start doing and and start seeing the effectiveness of that so when you say that you want to help people there's ways that you have to do the work in order to inspire that help you know people Absolutely. just don't always get it from just oh Carl I read your post I know what to do. Sometimes they need those call to actions to say, okay, you've read that. So this is how we're going to integrate it. And this is what I'm transitioning to with the business, but don't be afraid. I'm never leaving the writing. It's my bread and butter. So I'm never leaving that. I love that. Thank you. It is really your bread and butter. And that's like, so yeah. um, some talent that nobody even have. Right. And you have a card that like just so naturally together with empathizing you know, by your dad with, you know, the dictionary yeah. or talking with you spending time with you and talking about different words. So like writing and words are, or like linguistic is just so mm -hmm. close to you. Um, just because when you're at such a young age. So for us, for others, which is not very similar to your experience, I guess we, it takes us longer, but 
We always say all we need is just to get started. Practice yeah. makes perfect. Like we'll just a couple of points that you, you point out already and you will be able to uh, succeed no matter what. So I, I, I totally can echo on that. Great. Yep. And I want to ask, please, sorry, Car. No, I was just saying absolutely. I was agreeing with you. Cool. And I want to ask you, like, what are some of the direction that you think uh, works well on LinkedIn? I can start with, obviously, because I post something pretty vulnerable uh, mm -hmm. early this week, Car. So I want to share with you because you talk about vulnerability today. And I like that you said the, you know, the, uh, the, the hook in the first sentence is very, very important. So I was posting this pretty vulnerable post the other day, something quite close to me. And I'm just like really reluctant to share because it's just, it's a very different part of me. I uh, I was actually double my size but, um, like eight years, eight to 10 years ago. Uh, I was in a very, very bad shape and very bad health. And I just have very low self-esteem of my whole body. So I was just like basically saying a post like, dear ladies, you are stronger than you think and you yeah. can change how you think. And then the post just blown up, you know, just in a very good way. People just, you know, messaging me with support and really telling me like, oh, how, how do you get through that? Uh, how do you basically challenge yourself to get away from that mindset? And then tons of like amazing, very positive comments. So I felt like one of the direction that works really well on LinkedIn, like you said, not just being authentic of, of yourself and also sharing your personal story, right? Like going back to your point about, you know, your dad hand you the dictionary as a gift when you're so young and you write a blog about it on LinkedIn yeah. and it just got blown up too. Tons of people yeah. giving you, I know, I mean, for a fact, I'm one of them re that reading it, tons of people writing you super positive comments and, you know, interact with you. So what are some of the direction you find works really well on LinkedIn? <clears throat> well, when I tell people it's all, everybody is talking about all the, authenticity and then I'm probably going to take a earshot from people when when I say this and it, and this is something that I definitely believe in my heart a lot of people use that term and they throw that term out and it's so richly it's, it sort of reminds me like a few years back you know people would just use the term love you know mm -hmm. as in dating and relationship oh I love you I love you know it kind of like loses its flavor and the same thing with authenticity people use that in so many forms and so many formats on so many levels and so many platforms that it loses what it really means. And what I mean by when I'm saying vulnerable, you can't be, you can't be authentic if you're not vulnerable. Like those two don't go together because when people say they are vulnerable, Oh yeah, I'm authentic. And I do these authentic. And this is not the, this is not a jab at people. It's just that I want people to understand the word. This is coming from a guy that just, just tears up words. <laughs> when, you're, when you're being, uh, you know, when you're being authentic to something, I know people say, oh, that's the real. You are being real. And that is the key to it. You're being real in totality. That's the only way you can be authentic. Like you can't go to New York on the corner and buy a Gucci and expect that to be authentic Gucci. You know, mm -hmm. it goes through a process. And for yeah. you to be authentic, you've got to carry through that process. That yeah. process only comes through vulnerability. Because mm -hmm. when you're vulnerable, vulnerable is not going out here telling everybody your business. People have a misconception of how that is. They have a misunderstanding of how that is. Very vulnerable true. is not going out here to say that, oh, I'm weak in this, I'm weak in that. Vulnerable is just simply understanding things that you can't do that you need help with and you're seeking help for. Yeah. That's why you're vulnerable. So people use the term vulnerable and their understanding of it is misconstrued because they say, oh, you're vulnerable, man. You're soft. You're weak. No, that's farthest from the truth. When you become vulnerable, then you'll really realize how I've just coined the phrase a couple of weeks ago. It becomes your superpower mm. because once you're vulnerable on the inside, it magnifies on the outside. It makes you strong. People see you as strong. People see you as someone they can relate to. And that's what they saw in your story. They yeah. saw something in you that, yo, this is where I was. Maybe I was a little chubby. I was a little chubby kid. You know what I'm saying? I always suck my thumb. These are I suck my thumb and my dad had to put pepper on it so I wouldn't put it in my mouth. You know, that's a smart. That's a smart. Yeah. So these, yeah, because it got my mouth hot a lot of times when I stuck it in there. So it it stopped me from sucking my thumb. 
But what the vulnerability part that we have to get, if I'm going to be able to help you or be authentic with you, I've got to show my vulnerability. I've taken that even into my law studies and how the attorneys that, and the ones that I work with, they do law. Law is public. Law is mm-hmm. performed publicly. It's to, Everything concerning law is publicly, but it's also publicly performed, publicly done, and publicly worked by private people. Whenever you find an attorney, they're private. They don't want you to know things about them. They don't want, you know, things to find out about them. And that works well in some things. But I think for you to be more effective as an attorney, I think you have to be vulnerable enough to the client to know that, hey, this is where we're going. I might not be able to get you this or that. And I think you'll get more respect. And then people will start looking at your things differently. When you take on the understanding of being vulnerable, it's not you being weak. Being vulnerable is your superpower. I love that. Car being vulnerable is your superpower, guys. That's like one of the things, key, key, key takeaway from my end. And I absolutely love this. Car, since you talk a little bit about like the choice of word, I want to drill a little bit down of it because I, I find it quite useful for you know my audience as well as your audience and myself as well. Like you said, you're so right. Like vulnerable um authenticity. This word has been like overusing, it's like love, mm-hmm. right? I love you, and that love where it has been just overly using in a lot of different ways and being real like you said it's you know a sign of showing vulnerable Mm -hmm. so how would you change like you know in your linguistic world how would you replace you know authenticity with something else like are you saying you can build trust in a different way and using Mm -hmm. different angle or direction to tell a story rather than using the word authenticity Yes, and I think so. And that that is what gives me an advantage with words, because you can replace words that mean the same uh, or parallel to the meaning of what you're trying to get across. And what brings about the interest is because you're not using that target word. I was never one with keywords, but I know keywords play a big thing into how things are done and how things are. But they're so misleading as well. If I have you to write something with a bunch of keywords that I think is interesting you'll lose what you're trying to say or you'll sure. lose what you're trying to get across because it's the same thing with you writing something. Somebody say, okay, those keywords are not really what we're going to be using in this. Well, then if you take the keywords and everything I've written, then it takes away from what I've written. Yeah. So when I when I think of it that way, that I think it's, it's sort of like it goes to the thing of like the jungle. No one in the jungle has to tell the lion he's the king of the jungle. <laughs> he doesn't walk around the jungle talking about I'm the king. True. It's how he is. It's his presence. It's his demeanor. It's his character. All of those things show people your credibility and authenticity. You don't have to say that, oh, I'm authentic and I'm authentic because it's just, it's the same thing as I'm saying. That's like, can you imagine the Lion King, the movie, and he just walks around the jungle, Simba and, and, and Mufasa all day. I'm the king. I'm the king. Would, Lion, would, would that movie be interesting? No. no, but it was just his presence, his character, his demeanor, how he handled things, how he deal with adversity, how those things make you authentic. And being vulnerable is a big part of that because if you can't handle things being vulnerable, it's okay. You know, people have a problem with saying they don't know stuff. People have a problem with saying they can't do stuff. And people have a problem with saying, I don't want to ask nobody. Yeah. Those are the three things that's killing society. You know, no one wants to admit that they can't do anything. I don't care what it is. Uh, if it's hammering a nail and you've never did a nail, they'll tell you they can do it. No mm-hmm. one wants to admit that. No one wants to say those kind of things because it thinks that it, it makes them less of, yeah. but it doesn't make you less of. So there are words that you can use around that. I use vulnerable a lot and I've been picking that up to use a lot to offset the authenticity, yeah. to offset yeah people saying they're authentic because I'll show you authentic. I'll show you my story. I'll let you know my story and I'll show you how I overcame. And that's, that's giving you the three parts of what you need. You got a problem and you have a solution and now you have a plan. Those are the three things that you need to take away from it. Yeah. 
Absolutely. I love that. And I totally align with you, like authenticity. You don't necessarily need to keep saying that I'm authentic, I'm real, because that's mm-hmm. how it within your DNA, right? And in a way, it's just if you are show online as your true self, offline mm-hmm. it should be the same person. I always yeah. tell, you know, whoever that it's around me, you don't necessarily need to, mm-hmm. you know, mold the perfect you. You just be who you are. That's it. Mm-hmm. You know, that's period. It. It's really simple, yeah. I just want to call out one of my amazing content strategists as well as my amazing LinkedIn friend, Jennifer, here. Thank you so much for joining. And um, You're right, personal connection are everything. And thank you so much for sharing the inspiring story. Selena, same to you. And Shubham here earlier saying thank you so much, Carl, for, you know, the cool hope lines can be wonder. <laughs> And I try experimenting them without, you know, coming across as a clickbait. Absolutely. I love all these. Yeah. Car, I, I was going to say, I agree with Jennifer. Uh, the personal connections are, are amazing. And, and, and I did, I think I did a post. It's been a few months back when I had like over, I think I had hit my 6,000 follower plateau or something. And I made a concerted effort when I did that to say, I'm not going to add numbers. And don't get me wrong, 6,000 people is a lot of people to be trying to Zoom and trying to talk to. But, I, but I've made a concerted effort to try to get on Zoom calls with people because that builds your credibility. You can throw out a million of posts and people read your stuff every day. And it's just like people reading the newspaper. It's going to be there. They can purchase it. They read it and then they discharge it. I don't mm-hmm. want my stuff to be like that. I want you to be able to see it. I want you to be able to take it in. I want you to be able to take from it what you need and use it and in, and incorporate that into who you are. And I'm not saying I'm this, this guru with all the answers, but if you read a lot of my stuff, it has a lot of weight and it has a lot of power. And it's something in there for everybody. It may not be for you. That post may not be for you. But best believe I'm going to write something that you can use. Yes. I yeah. Love it. yeah, that's a really cool car. Like, and, and that's something really important for each and everyone uh, to know, and it's a great reminder for for everyone. Um, Tara, I want to ask you, how do you structure your pose, which is something very nitty gritty. I want to drill down, and um, guys, we have roughly around 10 minutes. If you guys have any questions for Car, please go ahead and ask us right now and leave the comment below. If you like our discussion so far, leave us some, uh, you know, thumbs up, show us some love, because that's really important. And again, yes. we're here to show up for you, and we're really here to support you. So, Car, what are some of the tips that you can give our audience? Like, how do you structure your posts going something really needy greedy from, you know, how you inspire your content to, you know, the choice of word to, you know, your strategies of, you know, the notifications, uh, pinging, um, strategies doing research. What are, how, how do you structure your post? I kind of structure, I, I structure everything with meditation. And, 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 and that is, uh, it, it depends on how you do it. It used to be when I was driving back and forth to work, I would get a lot of thoughts. That's why I resonated so much with the radio. I wouldn't have the radio on and I have the cars rolled up and, the, you know, the cars they're making now kind of like you in the sealed chamber when you get in. You can't hear <laughs> a lot of the outside noise. So it's very helpful for thinking. And sometimes I just like to hear my heartbeat. If you just stop and just kind of narrow in, you can actually hear through your, through your ear, through your mind's ear, your heart beating. So that is some of the things that I begin. That is what I begin with first. And once I begin with that, I get a structure. My posts are uh, educational, inspiring, and empowering. So they're going to perform those three things uh, uh, on that. And I got to get a, a call to action in that. Uh, LinkedIn is, and it, it's sad for me to say, but LinkedIn is so like lag on call to action. And yeah. when I say that, because everyone wants to let everyone know that they like what they wrote, but the essence and what drives LinkedIn is the call to actions. When someone asks you, and this is, this is something that I'm helping other people with because no one told it to me. When you're writing your things, don't get discouraged about people not paying attention. Just continue on the process because I began my first, what, five, six months of saying, leave your thoughts in the comments, share your thoughts in the comments. 
95% of those posts, out of all those posts that I've gotten, only 5% left their thoughts in the comments. Everybody mm -hmm. was more in a mind of like hitting love, celebrate, support, like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, insightful. Those things are key, but those are not metrics that I can use to know no. if my stuff is being effective. And you just have to have the mindset. I know what I write is effective. So it's sort of like uh, a little complacent uh, thinking that, you know, I know what I'm going to write is going to be effective. I don't waste time with that. So no. what I write is that. So those are some of the the, the keys that I, I, I give to that. And when you have something, put it out and don't change it. Like a lot of people have changed it and you find that a lot. I know when I was teaching in school, you find that a lot with people taking tests. Normally yeah. the first thing that comes to your mind is the answer. Yeah. So don't go, so don't go back and change it. So when you write something and it comes out and it flows and it feels good, post that. <laughs> don't go back and spend. I had a talk with someone in the other day and, and it was, it's like amazing to me. They said it took them 45 minutes to do a post. Oh my gosh. And I said, well, why? They said, no, I had the, I had the stuff. I had the content. I had, it. I was like, well, why did it take 45 minutes? They kept rereading it, trying to rewrite it. I said, well, you're losing <laughs> the post because yeah. what you, what you had to say came across the first time you wrote it down. So Absolutely. you, it, so you have to just uh, be confident in that. And uh, don't worry about what people say. I mean, as long as you're not writing nothing offensive, as long as you're not writing nothing vulgar, things of that where you would get flagged for anything that you have to say is, is useful and there's someone to pick that up, you know, someone to pick that up. So those are some of the, some of the keys. I hope I answered to, to, Absolutely. to the degree there. No, the structure is really good. And I like the way how you say about changes, like it, you shouldn't yes. like once you put it out, you should not change it. Just like what you said about the video, right? Once you post it, <laughs> Put your phone down and just mm -hmm. don't look at it and don't really mm -hmm. focus on them. I mean, people call it vanity metrics. To me, I think I do think those are important, but to your point, yes. right? It's mm -hmm. more people viewing the post. It's it's what matters. They might not engage or comment on your post at once because they're still building the relationship. I thought LinkedIn is a platform that is way difficult for yeah. you to build a deeper relationship than any other platform. Where for Instagram, you're right. Like the call to action or TikTok, the call to action is so so simple. You're you can double tap. I mean, LinkedIn now you can double tap it too, but it's just it's way different than how other platform is easily being engaged. But in a way, the conversation you can see to your point, the comments you should make those comments because those are comments that it's really driving conversation. And I see not a lot of like conversation or comments. It's just um a thumbs up or like just a heart heart right whereas any other social media you can see just an emoji type of con comments but here you will see people writing long form comments to to your mm -hmm. post right really adding value really answering some of the things that you're asking your audience about so really really great uh, a couple of really good points about how to structure your post. And I echo back, the CTA is super important if you're looking into writing a good post on LinkedIn is to, you know, you can ask people to follow you. I know Carr have been doing that and that's why he has been so successful on LinkedIn. So yes. please follow his content. And you can also ask people to invite them for opinion. Just like what Clark did uh, like two or a couple of weeks ago, ask people for your word, choice of word, and they, he will tag you in other posts when he see that word. So these are all great ideas that we can learn from Car, and I hope you guys are getting tons of a uh, key takeaway. And Car, yes. I want to end it with like a very positive note because your content are just so different from everybody else. How would you give a final biggest advice to people how to craft messages? that differentiate you from the others because I'm pretty uh, sure that's a tough one <laughs> yeah it, 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 is, it is tough because everybody everybody tries to grab a style that they see that's working and and, and that's not nothing new everybody has done that from since the world began someone has always tried to grab something that someone else saw successful what you have to do is go inside and your heart drives you. That's what's different. Everybody have a different heart. 
we may be parallel in thinking of some things. We may be parallel in how we agree with some things or some thoughts or some things like that. But what comes out of you is unique to you. And those are the things that you have to use as an attribute. Those are the things that's going to separate you from. It is a ton of content creators on LinkedIn, like tons of them. Everybody is not putting out the same thing. I wanted mine to be, I wanted mine to be different in the essence of it's coming from me and use the experience. This is another thing I was saying, and I know that we got to go use your experience to create the content. And when I say that, you don't have to go drive at straws to put something down. Use yeah. your life experience to create content because it resonates with others. You'd be surprised how many people have went through what you went through, but they were not able to put it into words and grab it. And that is what really separates my writing because I put into my experience, the same experience you had, but I've given you some plans and some actions as to say, Oh, I can overcome that too. He did it. I can do it. You know? Mm -hmm. So those are the things that make you original and authentic. I love that card. So learn from Cara about, you know, putting yourself out there, really sharing your own experience, like he said, as well as, you know, giving your own advice or opinion, actionable next step, what you overcome about something and share your story. I love that uh, to differentiate yourself from anybody else from the content. Great, guys. It has been a wonderful, great interviewing process with, you know, Carr. I learned so much myself by talking with you, Carr. I really hope that you enjoy the session as well. And for whoever yes. that is still, great, awesome. For whoever that is still on the LinkedIn Live, guys, remember to follow Carr here. He has his own hashtag. It's called Carr Shore Daily Words. If you guys don't know, I'm going to put it in the comments. And in my post, there's two hashtags you need to follow. One is Car Shore Daily Words, another is In It with Selena. So please follow that and follow Car for extra stellar, differentiate yourself type of content. You're going to surprise how amazing his words are, as well as really learning from him to create stroll stopping content from to today. So Gar guys, please um again so show us some love and you know leave comments and and if you're still in Clubhouse, I know you guys there's um four or five more people there. And if you guys are still there, um it's a listening session and you guys really enjoy today's session. Please again um watch the replay again on LinkedIn. If not, um we will say goodbye. Car any last word? I see I see Su Suham was saying great session. Car Selena you, so. every bit. Thank you, thank you. Yes, any last, last words. words. Yeah, last words. You hit it on the head. Just follow uh Carl Sean's daily word with the hashtag. Also, I'm gonna be putting out some uh, news because I got a lot of stuff coming out in March based upon Carl Sean's consulting. So I want you guys to engage. Let me know what you want. I got a few ideas that I'm throwing out. I'm going to do a couple of polls and I got some stuff coming out that I really want to share. I'm going to uh, open up a couple of uh, uh, program kind of things going on where I'm going to get interaction with people based upon things that's bothering or that's plaguing them issues that they're dealing with. And we're going to have, and I got a few panels uh, on my live show, the daily word live uh, with Carl Sean Watkins. I'm wow. going to do panels on that. We're going to, we just did a big panel the other day. It's like five of us and we're talking about uh, mental health, but I got a panel we're going to be doing. I'm going to be doing with Reggie Waterman and Jared Sucker and, uh, and uh, I think Robert Berry. We got like five brothers on there and we're going to be talking about excellence and going against uh going against the narrative how do you be excellent in not the conservative way but making your own excellence so i got a lot of things coming up guys it is going to be real and it's going to be lovely and you guys just continue to follow me continue to follow selena she has the realness on the real if you want to be a linkedin professional she can get you there i'm telling you so make Thanks. sure you follow her as well thank you car and thank you so much for being on my show and again thank guys you for having me 
Star for all his amazing daily show. I look forward to your daily show, and I hope I could be your guest in one of the. Yes, daily I'm looking for you because I know our times is like totally like opposite, but yes. uh, I'm looking. To, I'm looking to uh, get you on my show uh, too, so we could do a, a panel of who's who on LinkedIn. Because yeah. I got you and a couple of other ones that's really been on my mind that I want to engage with, and I just want to put you all in one place. So we yes. can just have a power hour. Absolutely. Yes. Let's do that. Would that be on LinkedIn or would be on your website, Carl? It could be, it's going to be on LinkedIn. And then um, I've added my YouTube to it. I'm kind of getting familiar with that. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm trying to teach myself these things. So I am get I get it on YouTube. So it'll be on my YouTube channel. You guys can subscribe to that too. It's up and running now. It's not too authentic. It's like mega. But I'm I'm working on that part too. Uh, C.S. Watkins one. Uh, look me up on YouTube. It's just a lot going on, and I'm just happy to be able to give back That's to so people. Inspiring. Absolutely. Yes. Is your YouTube link in your LinkedIn bio? Uh, yes. It's. Uh, wait. Uh, no. You know it's not. I need to put it in there. See, you always keep me on point. See. I was looking on my club. I got to add it in my clubhouse too. Yes, please. Cause someone is yeah. asking. I do. Okay. Just to, just to echo on that. Cool. Great yeah. guys. Again, thank you so much for joining us in my weekly LinkedIn live show. I'm so beyond grateful for car to join us here. Just showing so much golden nuggets for us yes. today. Great. The stroke stock and content. So keep doing that and let's get started. Cool, car. And I will see you soon. Thank you so much. All right. Time. No problem. Thank you for having me. You are a star. Thank you, everybody, for the came out. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Shaham. Thank you. I hope I do not butcher your name. I'm so sorry. If I do, <laughs> apologize. And Nadal, thank you. And Danelli, and thank you, Pascal. Thank you, LinkedIn user. I think he's definitely your biggest fan, Car. He said my fan. And then um, Gregory and a couple of you. Yes. Guys, thank you so much and speak soon and see you next week. Same time. See you later. See you. Bye. Bye-bye.